The circumcision debate, just to change pace, has been reignited this morning. The rate of parents choosing to have their sons circumcised has jumped 30% in the past two decades, prompting calls to have the procedure reintroduced in public holidays. Uh, this morning, we are joined by family therapist Karen Phillip and journalist Angela Mollard. Karen, this operation is being compared to vaccination as a preventative. Yes. What do you think? I, I believe it is. It, it really is. Look, you're going to have equal parents on one side of the barbed wire fence as you do on the other. Yeah. It always has been, it still is, and it always will be. It's often been based on religious grounds uh, to, Usually, to, yes. to circumcise or not, but, you know, this is a health reason. There is. There are major health risks. I have two boys. I struggled with the decision, but I decided to have both of my sons circumcised, partly because their dad was, but also partly because their grandfather, who had been in the war, told me some horrific stories of men, uh, of soldiers, that were required to have it done because of hygiene issues within that. And he said, look, if there is a war and your sons need to go, you do not want to send them non-circumcised. Yeah, it, look, it, it is um, very painful and can lead to serious complications. Do you remember? No, 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 I'm not talking about the circumcision, I don't remember that. Um, but, uh, you know, the condition that can arise from not, from, you know, unhygienic practices, oh, it can yes. be hard to keep clean, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think so, although I do think I'm, I'm against any kind of medical intervention where it's not necessary, and I'm not sure that we have conclusive um, uh, evidence that this is the way to go. Mm. Look, what I do, what I don't like um, is that if we're, if we're doing it for aesthetic reasons, and there's some suggestion that we are doing it that way, the other thing is, it's just yet another Thing that You're a fan of the frilly lizard, you don't mind the <laughs> I don't want to get. Look, I think. It's very interesting information. No, look, I think the look, I think the issue of polarizing all these issues, cesarean versus natural, you know, the the, the um, uh, breast versus bottle. We constantly now put the whole baby business under the microscope, look at it, have two two different viewpoints, and go hard at each other over it. I mean, yeah. look, everyone's going to have their own personal view, and they need to have that personal view. We are a democracy. Well, I'm a fan issue. of the snip, but I think that um, you know you've got to go to the right person because. It can go wrong. Mm. It can and it's problems. expensive as well. That's the other issue. That's right. With six hundred dollars. Yeah, and yeah. I think more people probably would be done if the cost was removed. But we also now give local anaesthetics, so the pain that there used to be years ago really has been removed. All right, now it makes me think of Antonio Banderas for some reason. <laughs> uh, he he <laughs> and Mel so Melanie Griffith have, uh, have split up after nearly twenty years. Uh, twenty years in Hollywood—that's a pretty long marriage. It's a very long time. I can't believe it. But look at the culture in in Hollywood and, and all of those sorts of celebrity marriages. It is in their culture, and that's, that's simply what it is. They don't live in reality. I oh, just don't. Angela, you're, you're a tilting at windmills kind of girl. You're a <laughs> blind romantic. Are, they, are Hollywood I relationships doomed to fail? I think it's sad. Look, I, you know, I think it's sad they've had 18 years together. As you yeah. say, that's yeah. a great innings, and we need to start looking at marriages as a success rather than a failure. 18 years to create a family, to have a children together, to have sustained what they have, and she's had rehab issues. They also live in the po public spotlight. It's the scrutiny that would events. make it unbearable. Yes. And Always. not just that, but I've interviewed plenty of celebrities, and you know, the minute you walk into a room with one of them, when their self-esteem is built on the process that you're then going through, there's some of them, I would say, people like Ewan McGregor and Matt Damon, who are just fully self-contained, strong oh, people in their Matt own right. Damon. There's a lot of others, though, you can see that that public... Um, Love of them is what creates them. Yeah, yeah, that'd be hard to sustain at home. You know? Very oh, hard. Well, yeah. I don't, you know, there's no ego in a marriage, is there? Well, you no. can't really get that personal that. time in, in marriages like that where two mm. of the celebrities. Mm. It's so hard. Now, so there's research suggesting that creative play and extending the leash. Rachel Brown in the Herald's got a great story this morning mm -hmm. saying that, uh, you know, if you leave a child's independence to them and, and don't hover around like these helicopter parents, that it creates a stronger, more creative, more adaptive child. Do you agree with that? Well, yes, I do. However, as a parent, we're going to protect our children. It's particularly up to the age of about four or five, we protect them because the child hasn't yet learned boundaries and risks. They just don't have that capacity mm -hmm. at that age. But look, once a child gets to five and they get to school or even preschool, they do explore, they do play, they do use their imagination. I actually object to this article because she says that, um, and, and the so-called authorities say that it's, it's creating depression and anxiety in our children, whereas research all leads, the primary cause to that is parental conflict. Yeah. Nothing to do with imagination and play. Certainly protect our children, but you know what, once they get to school, they do whatever they want as far as play. They do take risks and they do play. 
I don't know too many children that are older riding their bikes with training wheels. Keep them yeah. safe or let them loose. Oh, yeah. let them loose. And I, I tend to disagree. I think that you can only get imagination and daring and resilience when you do let them loose. And I, I do think that we are helicopter parenting them. You know, I, it's a real struggle for me as a parent. I am a natural helicopter parent. And I've had to, in the last few years, pull back, let them walk to the shop, let them fall over on the bushwalk, yeah, but not take the band-aids all the time, let them bleed. You know, but life is more dangerous these days and we have to protect our children. I would be able to go to the corner shop too, but we don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. We have the supermarket and the, and the What's shopping centres. What's the point is people look out for each other's kids a bit more than they do Yeah, now. that's and a very good point. The, the neighbourhood, there is no neighbourhood. Angela, I used to be a very casual parent and then one day I lost my daughter. Oh, <laughs> and the blind it? panic, I never yeah. want to put myself through that again. So it's not for her, it's for me that yeah. I hover a bit more. Often, but I mean, when my child, my first child was born, she was born, difficult birth, disability, no right arm use, and she climbed up on top of some swing sets when she was about six, and, I, and she's screaming out, Mum, I can't get down, and it's like, okay, decision, do I get you down, or do I allow you to learn how to do it yourself, so... I prayed and I let her do it herself. Now, there was a few oh, tears, God. it was, but it was the best thing I could have done yeah. for her. Yeah. Same as when she rode the bike, took the training wheels off, a few falls, mm -hmm. oh my God, have I done the right thing? But she is the most independent young woman with a disability. Yeah, they've got to learn early to, to pick themselves up, mm -hmm. don't they? They really do. All right, now finally, 21-year-old Sydney beauty Tegan Martin has picked herself up because this is the third time she's had a crack at this. She's been crowned Miss Universe <laughs> Australia overnight. And Angela, you're a mother of daughters. Um, she said that she just wanted to fulfil her dream. She kept going and she's finally <laughs> prevailed. What do you feel about the message Can that we get this off said? our screens? <laughs> Can we just take that off right now? This is tired, anachronistic stupidity. Oh. What are we doing in 2014? It's a celebration having girls, of Australian women. It is not. It's a celebration of bikinis and boobs. It, I, as a mother of two... Oh, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> The, on, my let, let, issue let. is it. It's Sweden that wins, it's Venezuela that wins, it's America that wins. Why is that? Because we have these We're conventional, conventional right? notions of beauty. When do you ever see Korea win? Do, when do we ever see Vietnam win? And that's why we have girls in those countries going for eyelid surgery, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The notion of beauty being someone that stands up there at six foot with, it, with boobs and, and blowing skin and blonde blue eyes, the Donald Trump idea. I'm over it. I'm yeah, sick of it. We shouldn't be having it. And we shouldn't be having it with girls with body image problems that we have. Millions of people enjoy it. Yes, genetics, all right? <laughs> Look, I wouldn't watch it. Personally, I don't watch it. And I would be horrified if my daughter said, oh, Mum, guess what? I'm going to enter. That would horrify me. However, good luck to them. I mean, you know. Do you know what? I'll tell you what, I've had some experience with this. And I have seen kids. <laughs> You've been a judge. Them because they get confident going to these things. They learn Some to speak do. and present themselves. You know it's not about the bikinis. You know they what? don't do that at Go the and job. throw a ball with them and they'll get confident. No, no, they're not. It's good for their school. It is. I've seen it happen. Like, kids that have been very, very quiet and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. reclusive blossom. They can. Some of them, they can. of course, uh, probably go off the deep end. <laughs> yeah, and mum's uh, hovering with their hair well, you know, spray. That's Tegan's dream. So you don't want your kids to follow suit. That's no what you're way. saying. So if yeah. your daughter said to you, gee, mum, I'm going to go in a pageant or no. I'm going to go in a competition, what would you tell her? No. Go get a Rhodes Scholarship, sweetheart. Oh. <laughs> oh Sorry. Harsh. You haven't harsh. been burnt in a pageant, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. Hardly. I have the thigh issue. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> <guys. laughs> Rubenesque. Yes. <laughs> don't know where that came from. <laughs> so, uh, uh, ladies, thank you very much. It's been enlightening. That's the Thanks, end of Ken. the pageant, Deb. Go on. Uh, enlightening, that's one word for it. Good on you, Ken.